from Escobar's Farm in Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, live to ride or ride to live? Does cycling help you live longer? And if so, by how much? And can you overdo it? Is too much actually bad for you? We've also got a brand new bike from Canyon, more from the Ragbri, where one rider did the 500 miles backwards, and the unwelcome return of Extreme Corner. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Machu van der Poel should stick to road racing. <laughs> Yeah, two years ago, he crashed out of the Olympic mountain bike race on the opening lap. And last week, he crashed out of the Worlds on the opening loop. We jest, of course, don't mm. we? Because I love the fact that he combines mountain bike with road and cyclocross. There would certainly have been a few more people tuning in, I think, for that race than normal. Yeah, and partly because... Well, Peter Sagan was there, and eventual winner Tom Pidcock were also competing, and former world road racing cyclocross champion Pauline Ferran Prevot won the women's for the fifth time, two days after winning the short track. She was going all right there, she was wasn't fine. she? Uh, we also learned this week that Chloe Digert averaged 323 watts for 47 <laughs> minutes to win the elite women's world time trial championships last week. Uh, and that came courtesy of some top Strava investigative work from Velo. Yeah, they deduced the Chloe Dykart post, some of her files, under the pseudonym of Vesper L. The activity has been flagged, mm. presumably, by someone who was not aware of the alias. No. Now, away from the world of professional cycling, this week we are discussing whether or not cycling can help increase your lifespan and or your health span. Yeah, it's a very broad question, of course, because there are so many different types of cyclists. A daily cycling commute is very different to competing at the Tour de France, and BMX racing is very different to riding around the world in 80 days. Vastly different, yeah. I would say, isn't it? But at the same time, there are some similarities between all of them, i.e. you're taking part in a non-weight-bearing exercise. But anyway, uh, we have been looking at some of the studies that we found online and the data accompanying them, and this is what we found. Yeah, we'll start with commuting. Scientists at the University of Glasgow investigated different types of commuting and their effects on cancer. There's cardiovascular disease and other causes of mortality. Yeah, there was over a quarter of a million people mm. participated in this particular study, which compared cycling, walking, and then non-active is what it said. Yeah, so car or public transport, just under 2,500 of the participants had passed away by the end of the study. And the results showed that cyclists were the least likely to have died. And had the lowest risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all other causes of mortality. Conclusion then, active commuting will go a long way to helping you live longer. And there are a lot of studies that have come to similar conclusions. For example, a smaller one conducted here in the UK by Professor Janet Lord. In that one, the participants were between 55 and 79 and had all ridden regularly to a decent standard for most of their adult lives. Blood analysis showed that their immune systems, T cell counts, and body fat resembled those of adults in their 20s. Yeah. Basically, regular cycling had slowed down the aging process significantly. Good news, that. It's amazing. Good. That's why I look so young. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Dad? Cyclists, swimmers, and those that did racket sports or aerobics came out on top in terms of all causes of mortality, while it's running and football didn't really show a substantial difference versus those who did not do sports It's strange that, isn't it? Because yeah. I would have thought that there must have been some health benefits to football and running, but that's 100%. just one study, of course. Uh, what about the intensity with which you ride? Because I've always wondered whether you can push yourself too hard and therefore do yourself more harm than good. Well, the most relevant study along those lines we think has come out of Denmark, because over there they track the health of over 5,000 cyclists over an average of 18 years. The conclusions were really interesting and might allay your fears. Those who cycled at the highest intensity outlived those who rode at a slow pace for 5.3 years, while as those who rode at an average intensity were better off by 2.9 years. Yeah, Does that make quite sense? significant, yes. But the differences were lower amongst the female participants. 
uh, where those who did the most intense riding had an average life expectancy of 3.9 years longer than the lowest intensity, uh, the average by 2.2 years. Yeah, these results correlate with a similar study done with walkers. Those who walked most briskly saw the most health benefits. And the conclusion of the both studies was that it's the intensity rather than the duration that yields the best results from a life expectancy perspective. So, if intensity is therefore fine, what about the duration? Can you do yourself more harm than good if you ride too long? Well, I would say you'd better hope not, Hank, given some of your challenges in recent years. Now, it's not easy to find many studies on the ultra-endurance well, but I did find a couple that looked at competitors at the Tour de France. Is it good news? It is, mate. Oh, thank God. It is, yeah. uh, for both of us, in fact. Now, one of them is in the International Journal of Sports Medicine, and that looked at just over 800 tour competitors from the 30s through to the 60s, and it found they lived on average eight years longer than the general population. Whilst the other study, which focused on French competitors between 1947 and 2012, found they lived on average six years longer. Yeah, so the longer and harder you ride, the better. To an extent, given those studies, I would say yes. Now, the main thing is that you don't have to worry about the long-term consequences of the epic challenges oh, that you God. have taken on since you joined GCN, Hank. Whilst I don't need to worry about the fact that I suffered for three weeks around France <laughs> all the way back in 2010. Well, it's great news for you then, yeah. given that you took four hours longer than the winner to get around there. Yes. <laughs> On that basis, I should outlive Alberto yeah. Contador, especially as it was probably more intense for me than it was for him, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah, overall then, I think all of us can feel good about what we're doing. Not only is it fun, not only is it good for your mental health, it's also going to help you live longer, which yeah. is the whole goal, isn't it? Fairly conclusively when you look at the study. Yeah. Live to ride and ride to live. Now, one thing I would say, though, linking back to last week's show, is that I still think it's important to combine cycling with some sort of strength and weight-bearing exercise. Cycling is fantastic for your heart and for your cardiovascular system, but to truly increase your health span well above the average person, you do need to build some muscle, I mean. Mm. How's that going for you, mate? Well, I'm not sure if you noticed, Hank, but I did do some squats the other day. I reckon I was lifting a good... 40 kilos. Yeah, so. and Lorraine was lifting 12? I would say, yes, probably something like that. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> the stronger that Lorraine gets, the less I will be squatting. <laughs> yeah, they weren't proper squats anyway, were they, mate? Let's be honest. Your legs barely could get to a right angle. Well, I'd have ripped her arms off if I had gone any lower, <laughs> wouldn't I? I'd taken all the weight away. Anyway, yeah. over to you at home. We'd love to hear from you if you've had some tests done that have revealed that you slowed down the aging process through cycling, or if cycling has changed your life to such a degree that your life expectancy is now significantly longer than it once was. Yeah, tell us your experiences in the comment section below. We definitely want to hear, don't we? I think there's going to be some real feel-good mm. stories from the people watching this. So I'm very really much looking forward to reading those comments once this show comes out. And now it's time for cycling shorts. Right, let's start cycling shorts now with news of a brand new bike from Canyon who have overhauled their top tier of their Endurace range. The redesigned frame has practical features such as clearance for 35 mil tires <laughs> and boys. tools hidden away in the top tube whilst also being mm. more aerodynamic. Essentially, they've taken some of the top tech from their top end world tour bikes and put it into a high end endurance bike. Perhaps the kind of bike that most of us should be riding. And now Connor, obviously, has managed mm. to get his hands on one and is now exploring how the geometry can accommodate a rider of his height. Uh, look out for that video, which should be out this coming Friday. Yeah. Now, moving on, and uh, let's follow up last week's show, where we discussed the secret to Mathieu van der Poel's success at the World Championships. It was, of course, his secret poo. Not so secret, though, after his team manager let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. <laughs> I couldn't help but chuckle at this picture, actually, on Twitter of Matt Stevens showing him a newspaper with the headline, Thank Poo Very Much. Uh, so fair play to Matthew, who's now so famous, even his number twos are worthy of the front page of a newspaper. Yeah, but not his number ones. Well, not yet. No. no. Now, have you ever tried to ride your bike backwards? Now, the answer is probably going to be no. But look at this. Alaskan cyclist Will Walker has just completed a 500-mile bike ride across the state of Iowa, all while riding backwards. Bonkers, yeah, this was at the Ragbri event, which we've mentioned a lot over the last few weeks. Riding 500 miles 
is hard enough, isn't it? You would know. But can you do it backwards? No. Can you imagine what the other riders were thinking as well when somebody passed them cruising along, sitting on his handlebars? Definitely a hold my beer moment, mm. I think you'll agree. Uh, not going to lie, Hank, I thought you were crazy with some of the challenges you take on, but I think Will has taken the title from you now. Yeah, well, fair play. I mean, it's just mind-blowing. That is definitely a world record I won't be attempting. Oh, yeah. Well, you heard it here first. Yeah. Track cycling news now, and the question being asked is, will the lawyers be deciding the track medals at the Paris Olympics? Mm. Uh, apparently, the British team is considering a challenge on the eligibility eligibility, shall I say, of the bikes that the French and Japanese teams are planning to use in Paris next year. Yes, now these potential infringements relate to the wide fork and seat stays designs on that Look P24 and the VIZU TCM, which do look incredibly similar to the Lotus bike that Team GB unveiled in 2019. Mm. Rules are rules, patents are patents, True. I guess. Uh, track racing has always been where tech is at the forefront of performance, and faster bikes could indeed make the difference between winning a medal and not. So this is going to be a very interesting battle between both the nations, but I'm guessing also the manufacturers and the patents that they've got. Yeah, watch this space. Now from crazy aero track bikes to slam stems, like you've never seen before. Yeah, this is the World Tour adventure cyclist, Lachlan Morton, who's taken learnings from road and applied it to his next challenge, which is the Leadville 100. This is his new Cannondale Scalpel HT High Mod, but with a stem so slammed, we reckon he might scrape his nose on the tire. I mean, it looks cool, and I guess from what Tom Pickock has shown the world, that the road ride is well too bad, but well too shabby on a... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks cool, I guess, from what Tom Pickcock has shown the world, that road bar riders aren't too shabby on a mountain bike, are they, Dan? squeaky then, thank you. <laughs> no, I don't know if you've already seen, if you've seen, but like, I also am pretty good on a mountain bike, I... Are you? Yeah, I did the Mega Avalanche. You... Oh, yeah, no, I'd never heard about that. Yeah. And you also go to the gym, I haven't seen any... Ah, funny that, I also do proper squats. <laughs> oh! Like, yeah. We will finish cycling shorts with a reminder of the, our current giveaway, because our shoe partners, DMT. Yeah, we mentioned this on last week's show, didn't we? For those of you who missed that, we've got a pair of Today Pogaccia signature heartbeat shoes up for grabs. Entries will close on Friday the 18th of August at 10 a.m. BST, and the winners are going to be announced on a future GCN tech show. Do you know what? I'm fuming about this. I've been wanting these shoes for ages. Oh, have you? <laughs> like, they've been sat on my <laughs> desk. You're not even allowed to enter. <laughs> and I'm just, I mean, like, they're my size. You know, ordered them for my size, and then suddenly... You look really good in them as well. I'm absolutely gutted. You can always buy them. Anyway, for those of you who can enter, and for those that can't, don't, don't dry your eyes, but um, but yeah, or you'll find all the descriptions and if you want to get involved. But yeah. if, if you There's don't, a link in the description below if you don't, don't all the details about, about how to enter. They are a lovely pair of yeah. shoes, I've got to say. I can see why you like them so much. So good luck to everybody who has entered or is going to before the end date. Pack forward slash bodge of the week now. Our first one this time around comes in from Lucian Kennings. Uh, just put extra water. So two beadons on the bike, two bottles sort of strapped to the top tube. This looks like some sort of triathlon thing. I'll tell you what it looks like. A bodge. <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> As Get a camel got. back. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you need the extra hydration, uh, I can see why you wouldn't want to fill just... your pockets up. But it just, to me, it still looks like a bodge. The main reason it looks like a bodge is because you that's the best you could come up with <laughs> from home. There must be more ingenious ways yeah. of mounting extra fluids to your bike than a couple <laughs> of straps on the top tube. Yeah, I think it's a bodge from us. I think it's a bodge. bodge as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was making the extreme case. No. Um, well, most people are in agreement with us, 68% to be precise. Also think that that is a bodge, unfortunately, Lucian. <laughs> right, I've got one from Total Bobbins. I very mm, much like that username, name. yeah. Bike transport and service supports for free. And we all like something for free, don't we? But look at this, two short legs of plastic electrical conduit, cut size to fit between the dropouts, make a perfect support for wheels off track, off, like when you're transporting the bikes. The rear one also makes a great chain keeper. <laughs> chain keeper, we're not, we're, yeah. Yeah, 
for, the, for long term viewers of the GCN show will know the contempt between me and Sai over chain keepers. I'm a massive fan. Si. I'm a massive fan because yeah. otherwise it just flaps around or it just like you know cuts. Oh off well, the welcome to the set. club. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can say this while Sai's not here, but he has no idea what he's talking about. It gets all grubby though, doesn't it? Exactly. On the yeah. chain stay. Um, no, I mean that's a hundred percent a hack from me. So it's good for through axles or quick release skewers. And the best bit, likely to be free if you ask your friendly local electrician for an off cut. Well, chain keeper is all I need to hear to yeah. say hack. And it's 88% hack. Well, what were you going to say? I was going to say hack 100%. You were, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I actually need one of those. Well, 88% of people yeah. know what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Sai would be in the 12% of yeah. that one, I can tell you. With his ankle. Uh, Shred Faction got my picture taken with Philippe at the World Championships. For some reason, I'm not looking at the camera and he has his eyes closed. Funniest celebrity selfie or total bodge? Uh, I'm a big fan of that kind of photo. <laughs> I think it's quite cool I'm, as I'm well. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. I mean, Alaphilippe looks like he's half asleep. Well, it looks like he's fully asleep, really. Yeah. Stood up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, it is just the classic, isn't it? You know when like you get your photo taken with someone, you're like, oh, this could look really good, and then you look at it like, shit. But I can't go back and ask him for another photo. It's all right, we'll beat that yeah. out. <laughs> I tell you what, I did uh, in Whistler. We were over there on holiday, and it ha just so happened we booked it a long time beforehand. Just so happened that we were there at the same time as Crankworks. And there's a famous mountain biker whose name I forget that Jude knew all about from yeah. YouTube. Sam Pilgrim. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was obviously quite busy, and a couple of people got up to him. I was like, oh, I don't want to be that person that goes over and asks for another photo. But I thought, Jude really wants, so I went over. <laughs> so I did a couple. Anyway, got back to look at it. Neither of them had taken. <laughs> Yeah. So I didn't get a photo at all. No, because you can't. The last thing you can do is going to annoy the, you know, that celebrity or whoever it is for another photo. It's no. just so embarrassing. <laughs> it's hard enough the first time. Um, yes. Anyway, Sam, if you're watching, which I'm sure you're not, this is a road cycling channel, but you <laughs> would love another uh, photo with you. Yeah. Well, the first one, as it would be. <gasps> Uh, well, I'm going. I'm going hack. You got your picture with the former world champion. Yeah, hundred percent hack. <laughs> All with, with his eyes shut. Yeah. yeah. Well, forty six percent went with hack. Most people thought that was a bodge. Right. Here's one I am absolutely in love with. Stubbsy has got it all nailed. Mm. Surfs up. Being in Tofino, BC, Canada, a nifty homemade surfboard carrier for the short pedal to the beach. I have to say, there's so many different like you know bicycle like surf racks, but like, mm. but making your own is, I mean, well, I might contradict myself. It's so cool, but it looks <laughs> without a surfboard. Don't, I'm swearing a lot in this channel, but like, it looks rubbish without the surfboard. But when the surfboard's on it, there's something about a bike and a surfboard just mm. looks so cool. Yeah, as I said, I'm going to contradict myself here because last week I said that these homemade lights were a bodge because of all the white plastic used. I just didn't think it looked very good. But for some reason, transporting a surfboard about it seems more appropriate. Yeah. So I'm saying hack. Oh, hack, 100%. Yeah, well, you yeah. said you're in love with it. Um, yeah. Well, 68% of people said that that one was a hack, 32%. So cool. So cool. He literally is in love with it. Anyway, if you'd like to get involved, ready for next week's show, you know what you need to do. But if you don't, all you have to do is upload your pictures or videos of hacks slash bodges to the GSIN app. It's now time for the caption competition. Your opportunity to win our coveted GCN Elite water bottle if we get to pick out your caption on this picture from last week's show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was the picture that we gave you to get mm. stuck into, so to speak, on last week's show. And our winner is at Matt underscore Acton hashtag, hashtag hyphen variant. <laughs> Caption, don't you just hate it when after overeating in the off season, you find out your new race kit is on the little side? It's good. It's, it's very good. good, isn't it's it? It's quite, the little supermarket makes for easy puns, doesn't it? It is, yeah. It does. Anyway, well done to you, Matt. Get in but, touch with us on Facebook with your address and we'll get this elite water bottle sent out to you. Do you know what, though? I was just thinking, you know, Connor has this all the time. Whenever he stands up, his belly button comes out. <laughs> anyway, one for another time. And it's just staring you in the yeah. eyes. It's like... <laughs> Along those lines, this is your caption photo yeah. for this week from the Men's World Time Trial Championships podium. Uh, we will get you started this week. I'm going to be Renko Evenpool. You can be either Josh Tyne or Philippe O'Gannon, your okay. choice. Yeah. Uh, are you ready? 
Oi, I'm supposed to be on the top step of the podium. You are. There we go. Wow, that was good acting as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I was sure. Trying, I was going to do the Italian accent, but I thought, I just, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, you did the so I just did, could have done the Welsh. Yeah. Just darling. yeah. Anyway, now is your chance to try and win an elite water bottle. Stick your captions in the comment section down below, and we'll pick a winner this time next week. Just before we get on to what's coming out on the channel this week, a few of our favourite comments from the last seven days, starting with a couple underneath last week's show. At L Whitrock one wrote, and here I thought all my wins over the years were due to my athleticism, but it turns out it was my stunning good looks lol. Whilst Mrs. JR39 or Mr. SJR39, yeah, my wife thinks that GCN videos are inane, and this morning she walked into the room just as the GCN show was opening with, are more attractive people better cyclists? Sort of proved her point right there, guys. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I love just getting a look into you know, people's real lives. I love that. Uh, under Gravel Ride Through a City, where uh, Amy, Connor and I took on a gravel ride in London, we got one in from Randy Pepler, eight, Four eight zero. We need a Hank and Amy adventure where Amy tries to break Hank on her choice of riding. Her energy is fantastic. Do you reckon she could break you? Um, prob <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, E-bike scrapper comes in with next video. Can you teach an old dog new tricks. Amy teaches Connor how to corner out speed. <laughs> Watch this space because I think that might just be happening. Will it? Mm. Wow. Basically, what happened was. Connor, like Connor is just so top heavy. Mm. And I, I think Amy was just like, I'm sitting behind a bus here and he's cornering like he's like, like, in, like a giraffe. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm looking forward to that video <laughs> already, I've got to say. Uh, maybe Connor's belly button will be on show for that. Oh God. Is lactate testing the next big thing? Under that, Peter Thomas wrote a very eye-opening video into what tech devices are available for serious racing tyres. But as a purely amateur rider, I rely almost exclusively on my smile meter to gauge the quality of my ride. Amen to that. Very good point. Yeah. Under can this road cyclist overcome their fears? Andrew McAllister, well done Chloe in conquering your fears and appearing in GCN video. I have to agree, she did a cracking job. Chloe did there. Uh, another one, hack fabrication, 139. Charles and Chloe out for a ride together. Brilliant. Charles? Yeah, I'm not quite sure I get that one. Uh, I think they meant Alex. Is that his nickname? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I brought back memories from lockdown because I actually did a video with Lorraine which did not involve squats that don't quite get to 90 degrees. It was teaching her how to use clipless pedals. Very good video. Well, yeah, I yeah. looked at it. Looked at it I'll tell you what, for a long time, a good three or four weeks afterwards, Lorraine was obsessed. Was like obs no, obsessed with the comments. Oh, yeah, She'd yeah, be yeah, looking yeah. down at her phone and every now and again she'd pop up and say, Somebody else here thinks you're punching above your weight, Dad. <laughs> Do you know what? My, dad's, phone back, my dad's the same. My dad, yeah. when he's on periods on a video, he literally obsesses over it. He, goes into, <laughs> he, 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 walk, he gets so bad that he walks around with his laptop to show people the video. And the comments. Yeah, bizarre. Mm. Right then, on the channel this week, starting on Wednesday, six things that the UCI should ban. Uh, we spend a lot of time talking about things that they have banned, which we perhaps don't think they should have done, but we think they should ban these six things. On Thursday, we're not quite sure of the title yet, but it's going to be along the lines of, so you think you're a good cyclist? Mm. Uh, Hank and Connor are going to come with, at you with a few pro tips to benefit even people that think they're already spot on with everything yeah. they do. Yeah, so the idea of that is literally to, to see if we can give you some of those subtle tips that you might not mm. already know. Yeah. Uh, on Friday, Canyon Endurance, the first look. I cannot wait to see that. Um, uh, on Saturday, Gravel versus Mountain Bike, 100 miles uh, challenge. This is where Sai takes on one of our presenters on GMBN, Isaac Mundy, in a big battle. And on Sunday, the big one. Ollie is done the uh, the one thousand mile. Station, wasn't it? Yeah, it was insane. 1,000 mile. He he loves it, doesn't he? He just tries to take my crown. Yeah, well, he's, he's coming close, mate. Mate. He's coming for he's you. He's knocking on the door, isn't he? I mean, I don't think you can do a muscle-up. No, you definitely can't. But on the bike. Uh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to have to retire. Uh, right, well, we promised you the unwelcome, or perhaps welcome return this week, of... 
Extreme, Extreme Corner. Corner. Mm. Let's take a look at it now. Bloody hell. I reckon that was a road rider on a mountain bike. 100%. Have you seen, have you seen my crash? This is like similar to that. Oh, no, I did see it. Yeah. Oh, on, yeah, I saw me, it on, our, on our group WhatsApp chat. Mega Avalanche, mm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it looked quite as impressive as that. But this, <laughs> yeah. no, uh, that no came one. instantly from Billy Rides Mountain Bike over on the GCN app. So thank you to Billy. Mm. And if that was you, I hope you're not too badly injured. Uh, just before we conclude this week's GCN show, a nod to a lot of the racing we've got coming up for you this week. You might think that after the UCI Super Worlds, the racing might calm down a little bit before the Vuelta Espana, the final men's grand tour of the season. Season. But no, there's so much racing on this week. There are some territory restrictions, so make sure you check what's available where you are. But today, the tours of Denmark and Limousin started. Uh, we've got the Arctic Race of Norway commencing on Thursday. I think that is concluding on Sunday, so four days of that. Uh, Tour of Leuven was on today as well, so that's a one-day race that you can catch up with. And on Sunday, it is the final round of three this year of the brand new National Cycling League. So the NCL over in the US, a new format for crit racing over there, which I can tell you has been enthralling so far. Points available at the end of each lap, but way more points available at the finish line. And you're allowed substitutions mid-race, which teams use to great yeah. effect in round two. Another exciting so format, one. isn't it? Yeah, that is very good indeed. Mm. Right, thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you again next week.